James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is August 26, 2023, 1.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. You're looking at Earth's electromagnetic shield. It was walloped right around 12 UTC time, about 3 in the morning. That's been ongoing through 5 and even 7 this morning. I definitely had a rough night sleeping. I don't know if any of you guys did. These spikes seem to, some of them, go off the charts at 15, 1600 hertz. Now we have a really strange, well, registration here on really both models. And nothing large is happening to the geophones during this time period, which is even stranger. Majority of these spikes went as high as 600, maybe 700 hertz. And this went on for at least an hour and a half before it subsided. When we see this activity, we usually see large spikes in the Schumann residence. So let's jump over and take a look and see what happened. All right, taking a look at the Schumann residence, you can see it started up around 11 UTC time as far as we can see from this model a very strong spike completely off the charts ending at 105 Hertz no telling how high it went for a long period of time here from 12 UTC time or about 3 in the morning to about 5 in the morning and then we did have this actually clear up I want y'all to notice that it cleared up right about 17 to 17.15 UTC time, then nothing was allowed to happen after that. That's going to come into play here as we determine the agitator and the actual cause of these spikes. Now, remember, I said that these intense Schumann resonance spikes could very well cause ascension because they cause higher vibration and higher frequency. But I do believe that these Responses we're seeing on these models, although they might be real, are due to our atmosphere and the actual cavity of our atmosphere breaking down and, well, actually depleting, just like what happened on Mars, right? All right, looking at a six-day comparison, each line is a day actually broken up into six hour periods here zero to 600 600 1200 1200 1800 1800 2400 utc time so again we see a lot of the activity starting here at about 11 we did have some noise but i would consider that normal schumann resident spiking down under 20 hertz then all of a sudden right around 11 utc time it went off the charts and continued to stay off the charts. Uh, and that lasted for about two and a half to three hours. Then we had an additional spike come in that looks like it at least, well, you can actually see it went off the charts up here at 50 hertz, right above the Z. You can see it doing that. And then all of a sudden, the Schumann resonance wasn't responding anymore. Now, this is an earlier in the day uh, well, response or actual Schumann resonance spike than we're used to seeing. We're going to see if we can find the agitator and see if we can find out why it stopped. Now, these are our actual geophone strips. You can see that this started uh, about 1100 UTC time and 1200, 1215, 1230. 12, 16, 1300, super hard. You're looking at geophone strips, hourly geophone strips cut up into 15 minute increments. Then we had additional spiking here at one. And it looks like we've had on and off spiking since then. This brings us into the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and almost to 1800 UTC time, current time. Taking a look at the spikes here, it looks like they started at around 1030. You can see that our geophones, our ULF noise monitors, our ELF noise monitors, and our second SR frequency 
all confirm that we had a very strong spike here. Again, this looks like it started closer to 1030, subsided, and then really hit hard about noon, subsided, uh, took another bounce up. And what we're seeing now is that go back to normal around 1700 UTC time. You can see that right there. All right, let's look for an agitator. CERN is expecting a new beam after being, well, disabled and breaking at the middle of next week. Nothing I want to see or hear here. This is the Large Hydron Collider at CERN. It's been offline now for about three months due to a failure, a leak, in fact, and they're about to start it back up. Obviously, no activity at CERN, no beam on, not the agitator. Looking at our KP indexes, looking for something in the solar weather, I usually find this reversely related to the Schumann resonance. Because our shields start to really energize to try to protect Earth when we have inbound solar winds and plasma. Here we see that we've had six hours Six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, according to the College Index. Nothing recorded on the Boulder, Fredericksburg, or Estimated Planetary Index. Now, the problem is, is the time period of the spiking is going to be a little bit before that. Uh, we'll give you exact times. 7 till 1 Central Time. We'll have to add numbers to get to UTC time. So 1 plus 7 is 8 a.m. We saw activity start about 12, 11.30 UTC time. Now this will run into that period. Uh, obviously, we have 14 minus 7 is 7 a.m. Now most of this started after these time periods. Thus, I don't believe that space weather is the agitator either. I think the agitator is going to be the same old agitator. The question is, is why do we never see any Schumann resonance spikes over 35 hertz until 2017? And why are they steadily increasing? It has to do with the magnetosphere, the loss of our magnetosphere, the cavity collapsion, probably associated with the pole flip that's ongoing, the uh, electromagnetic pole flip, not the physical pole flip. Now we're about to head over and take a look at Italy here on Windy, but you can see that they've come in and seeded all of these areas to actually enhance the lightning and thunderstorms coming later this afternoon. It's evident what they've done, period, here. Unbelievable. And we see thunderstorms just right under the station here in Italy and to the north and this is all electricity we will run through it but we can be assured that some of this probably this area here passed over during that time period now i don't believe that when this area passes over here that it will be an agitator i believe that our shields strengthen back up and i'll show you what i mean in about 17 15 utc time and even if we have lightning, the usual agitator, I don't believe that it will be spiking off the charts. We'll have to take a look. But let's take a look first at what happened to our shields until 1715. To do that, we'll look at our BZ. It's moved to the north, just positive, barely. But before that, it was way down in the negative territory. This is negative 3.5. And it had moved to the south. Our shields were down at this point. And this seems to have ended at 1711 UTC time. Right about when the spiking ended. Now the agitator could have gone by by then. Usually it will pick up lightning from anywhere around the actual monitoring station. We're going to get back to that station in just a second. But I wanted you all to see when our shields were covered here into a positive situation. It's going to be 1712 UTC time. Exactly the time 
these spikes stopped, period. All right, let's zoom in and take a look. It looks like we've got plenty of thunderstorms on the way. And who knows, the BZ could go negative again as well. But this is the actual modeling station. We have all this, all these lightning storms. There it is right there. Anna, and we have all these lightning storms inbound uh, that should reactivate it very shortly, within 15 or 20 minutes. Now we see that our BZ is north and positive. We're going to see if this, this lightning storm actually sends spikes off the charts as the other ones did. With that said, I'll keep an eye on it, let you guys know. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World.